Hello guys, Patrick here, Agonaut Poker. Today we're going to be doing a new video and we're going to be jumping straight into our mini series on our sort of mini bankroll challenge as it were. So as you can see, this is our graph. We are currently, um, let's have a look at our exact amounts. We are currently up $11.38. Our all-in adjustment is $14.88. Still a small sample, only 24.66 hands, but it's looking like it's going in the right direction, which is always good. So let's jump straight back in as I get these tables set up. Just as always, guys, thank you so much to everyone who's been um, joining the action, subscribing, joining the Discord. All the info and jazz is in the description, as always. If you're liking the content and interested, please, please join the team. Get that subscribe button clicked, leave your comments, leave your likes, etc., etc. And we very, very much, uh, very, very much like to welcome you to the team. So let me get this one moved over. There we go. So we're set up, let's get rolling. See if we can make some millions today, hopefully, that would be nice. Right, um, okay then, so let's get folding. Lots and lots of folding all over the place. Easy folds. Marking up on the nine three six seven two. Let's go ahead and open that one. Swapped absolutely zero equity, multi way, not really anything happening. We're gonna be checking this one. Picking up an open ender, that's nice. First is this one big blind donk. I'm just gonna go ahead and raise that up see if we can punish <clears throat> so we can punish some leads so we can get uh when the guy leads and one big blind and snap calls i don't think he's got a queen he's either got some kind of small draw or a 10 i think i'm just gonna go big i think he's got a lot of 10x um although we could to be fair i'm just thinking about it at this stake isn't it like he's never folding a queen he may still not fold a 10 and he's just got tons of like jack nine and spade draws right so if we just bet small we can make all of that fold so let's go ahead and bet some more, see if we can make all of that fold. King jacks, ace jacks, spade combos. That's the only trade we're betting small is if he does have a 10, then it's not likely going to fold for that size, whereas it may have done for a larger size. But again, just the way this played, like the guy leads one big blind into seven and snap calls a raise. At micro stakes, that's just so indicative of a draw. Um, so not really too concerned. Um, not really a good spot to bet table one, but we don't care because we're in a micro stokes mentality, so we're just going to see that. Just that simple. And I'm going to be betting on table two. I think I'm going to go for a two stage combo. I'm going to go small and then go big on the turn and then knock out hands like pocket sevens, pocket sixes, etc. Rather than just bet big and pull a rise. I think we do well by just betting small and continuing a lot of turns. So now I'm going to overbet and try and knock out all the sevens, the sixes, the nines, the eights, etc. So actually, to be fair, we don't have to overbet. We can just bet big. And if Phil and calls, we're probably just done, to be fair. I've got no information on table one with my eights, so I'm debating whether to call or three bet. I think we're basically always calling. I think at micros, it's just going to be the best solution as well versus UTG. And we're going to be calling. And we will be calling turn, probably giving up river. Um, versus check back, we like that. Villain can still have nines and tens. Villain can still hit this queen, so we're just going to check and hope he checks back something like ace king, ace ten. Nice. And micros, I don't really know what to do here on table two. I don't like the idea of just calling down like one or two streets with not showdown. I would prefer to raise rather than call, because so I think like if he's going to bluff, he's going to keep bluffing. He's value betting, he's going to keep value betting. He's probably going to bet this board with full frequency, so I'm just going to go ahead and raise and then probably just give up turn. Nice. Um, there's a lot of action table one. What's happened here? I feel like I've opened this. I actually completely forgot what's happened here. Button, small blind, big blind. This guy must have limped. I must have raised 3x, call, 3-bet, cold call. Yeah, I'm just going to call with this price. 
with three recreationals in the pot. Uh, we're checking. Obviously, we've completely demolished the board. There's nothing really we can do here with King 10. If I had King 10 of spades or something like that, or like Ace Jack with a club or something, we might be able to do some shenanigans. I'm really not thrilled with this three and a half X open and this monstrous three bet and easy fold. Flipping an open ender, table two. Uh, this is a limp pot, isn't it? I don't mind raising or calling. Let's call. Probably just going to call, call, and then see what happens on turn. Although against 4x over bet, <laughs> he's going to win the money. What do I feel like he's just turned a set of fours? Folding, 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 folding. Opening King Chuck suited. That's a good hand. Let's open that. I'm not going to be playing any checks as a kind of correct strategy um, against like mid to late position um, calls. We're just going to be playing a really heavy C betting strategy. And we're going to fold to race really easy. We just don't have enough bluffs in any in any situ sort of situation. It's so much better to just C bet and fold to the very, very rare occasion that you get raised. And it also works out really well when you're uh, when they just fold loads and usually only raise with value most of the time. So. Works out really, really, really well. Uh, even to a mid open, I'm going to fold the four deuce off. Tempted to open the 10 7 against a recreational. Nope. Uh, not ISO in this, folding this, nice and easy. Folding the king eight and folding the nine seven off. Very, very easy, very easy. Loads of folding, 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 folding. Got a recreation of the big blinds, so I'm going to go ahead and open this. I'm not going to do any kind of RNG. I'm just going to open this because I've got Rex. I think I can make money with it. It'd be a very small amount of money. I think I can still do it. It's a really, really good board for range, but like we're multi way with a pair. So we're only thinking about pure exploit strategy. So we're either we're either absolutely steamrolling this three streets to try and um, get maximum fold equity, or we're just going to go ahead and check multi way. That is, um, I flipped absolutely no equity in a limp pot versus check. I think I'm just going to pot this and probably just bet a bunch of turns and folding tip one. I'm very aggressive heads up, but multi way. I'm, I'd rather have nothing um, to bluff with there than an under bear. Or I'd rather have like, you know, equity rather than uh, like a low under bear, especially multi-weight. Mm -mm -mm. Four three is gonna be an easy fold. As is the nine five. You can see the table too. Let's go ahead and raise that one up. And fold in the deuce seven. If we get four bet, we're just going to fold. I'm not call doing any calling against four bets at micro stakes, which is why I will be doing a lot of sort of quite strong linear calling rather than. Um, so when I say linear, sorry, I mean like more kind of like strong linear hands, like in my th in my flatting range, like king ten suited. I like flatting a lot there actually instead of three betting, but because uh, we just three bet and fold to four bet a lot or keep their range really, really strong, which is not ideal. Um, I don't really know what to do table one against this spot. I think I would rather three bet this, but three betting a, like off suit ace -X against recreationals, they just don't fold. So I'm just going to fold it. I'm not going to call. If I was against like a another type of opponent, I would um, three bet that. I don't think I just want to call behind. You could probably argue for calling, but the rake is so high that it's uh, a little bit disincentivized to for us to call. Also, we're um, dominated a lot, so. Kind of a weird one. Uh, for this queen nine. Got a wreck in the small blind, but queen seven suits a little bit loose to open from the hijack. 
Bonding eight five. Easy four jack three. As is the four seven. Not gonna be doing any limping. Uh, a blind and blind breaks too high. Defending fours easy defend. This is a small size. I'm gonna call. I'm not gonna raise. Debating whether to lead because we don't have a club. It's like I don't need to protect my club. Like rather than turn to turn it into a bluff. But I think we still just beat a bunch of hands like king queen, king jack, etc. So just gonna check. We still beat a bunch of hands, like we still beat the offsuit combos with a club, technically, but I'm just gonna fold this. We have loads of other better hands to call than a pair of fours with no club. And I'm not going to be raising. Uh, easy open with the ace jack and obviously the kings. Last time I checked these two were approved opens. Facing three bet, because we're at micro stakes and versus this kind of like slightly larger size, I genuinely think ripping it's the best. I don't think people bluff hijack the UTG. Um, so when they're value orientated, I think they only call. And jamming looks like ace king a lot, right? So I don't think they fold. So I'm going to jam. Good luck. And I'm debating whether to, uh, you could also just four bet, but I think jamming just gets the call versus hands we're supposed to get called by. Um debating whether or not to raise this donk on table two multi-way with this guy behind. I think I'm going to call, I'm going to be cautious on the flop and then I may be, be more aggressive on the turn because we're multi-way. Uh, easy open with the king queen. Nice card on the turn. Four changes nothing except random ace four suited, I suppose. Versus check, we're going to go really big. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go massive for value against like flush draws and so on and weaker ace x. And if this guy check raises, I'm just going to fold. It's very easy. Which is going to maximize value from like flush draws, maximize value from like ace nine, ace ten. Um, so this is a really egregious river card. Why do you think that is? Anybody at home? It's because we now have aces up with a queen, which means our jack has been counterfeited. So all we can do is just call. There we go. We had this guy crushed. Although this guy actually wants to lead with a, with a king. Uh, sorry, with a queen, which is interesting. We'll take it. We'll not complain. What I should be really doing there is also taking notes. Like that guy with the ace queen called off exceptionally light. That's a good note to make. I'll put that. I'll put that. I'll put that note in after at the, after the uh, video is finished. But um, uh, and also table two with the recreational leading with the uh, king queen into the into the three ways. Really really good notes to take. I'm not going to fold. I'm going to limp versus this 18 big blind stack table two. Just see a flop if we can. Flopping a gut shot. I think with this stack depth, I don't like the idea of check calling or check raising. So I'm just going to lead, I think, and just fold out his random garbage. Uh, so I don't think this guy's got many hands that calls the flop and folds that unfolds on a brick turn, honestly, especially when clubs develop. I mean, no, let's no, sod it. Let's just bet turn. Maybe he just calls with a hand like a six with a heart, for example. That might fold the turn. I think I prefer this. Although I don't think we generate that many folds, but YOLO. And we're over an eight, but it's not good to uh, not good enough to bet for value, in my opinion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check here, give this guy the chance to bluff rivers. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I mean, we block jack nine, we block pocket eights. I think this guy would have raised a seven on the flop all the turn. It kind of, it's a, yeah, this is just a call, I suppose. The guy could have a 10, but I think he's got too many draws. Okay, if you've got seven, then well done. I think for that SBR and the way that hand played, I think I played that quite well, actually. I don't think I would have liked betting river. I don't think I would have liked folding with that specific hand. I mean, that guy didn't even think about it either. He just sticks it in. Uh, folding this eight, nine, folding the 10 deuce. I don't know though, it still kind of cements my logic that people who bet on rivers don't really ever not win at this stake. <laughs> Even with a hand as to, um, good enough to call as ours. Uh, not three being 8-8 suited versus three and a half recreational, I'm just gonna fold. And because we're multi-way, I'm just gonna take showdown, I'm not gonna see bet. 
and I would either be raising or um, folding table two. I'm not going to be calling versus a float multi-way because if we're at micro stakes, like the stakes as low as they are, people don't have enough like total bluffs. People, This guy doesn't bet here enough of like four or five of hearts and stuff like that. He just has a lot of value and has a lot of mixed hands that are going to bet turn and bet river. And I don't want to like that. I could, for example, raise this. But like the guy can still just have king queen. He can still have sevens. He can still have like ace queen. He can still have jack ten. He can still have loads of flush draws. Like in terms of all, how easy all of these spots will become for me to get value, it's just not necessary to make these sort of big, um, big marginal sort of you know correct call downs. Like I can't really fold middle pair and a, and a gut shot there in theory. But at the same time, it's like if the guy's almost never bluffing at all then it's like I don't really favor raising and I don't really fa uh, like calling. So that's the that's the thought process there. Like some of these folds will be like, you know, incorrect and they'll look very tight. And then some of the raises and the seabedding will look like sort of way out of line, but it just works and it works extremely well as you can see from results. So that's basically my, uh, my mindset and my focus in these stakes. Like I'm happy to have very exploitable stats because I'm not being exploited. Very, very simply put. Easy fold, eight three five seven suited. Um, see what happens. Uh, let's see a flop. Uh, I'm not going to lead. So we've got two options. We can just check and hope we go to showdown or fold versus a probe. Or we can just bet and just fold out his junk. But I think I'm just going to check. Because I mean, this is this hand isn't good enough to check call. For example, we're, we're purely hoping this guy checks back. If we're betting, it's absolutely a bluff. Uh, I think we'll just check down and hope we win versus like a random ace, maybe I suppose. At these stakes, it's like yeah, it's okay. But for example, if we check there on the turn and villain's going to appropriately um, attack us, then we're basically saying we're never going to win. Um, I don't know what to do versus him in open. Min open's kind of weird at these stakes. I don't know if that's strength. I don't know if that's weakness. I'm going to free bet the um, ace eight suit. I, I, I'm not going to go seven and a half x. I'm just going to go six. I don't think I need to go that big. Yeah, let, uh, yeah. Let's just go ahead and raise. Easy folds. Mark and mark and mark in. Again, guys, as always, please, please support the channel by liking, leaving your comments, and most importantly, pressing that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon if you can as well. It means a massive amount. And as always, in my description below is the details for my Twitch, which I will use at some point in the future, I do promise. I think at this point with this internet, it's a bit annoying. I'm probably just going to end up doing it, to be honest. Maybe in the day, we'll see. Um, but for the... Um, Discord, we're nearly at 50 now, so please, please join the team. You will be very, very welcome. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and bet. I think I'm going to size up a little bit, table two. Uh, folding, 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 folding. Broken record. Uh, I'm going to defend the Queen Jack suited. We could three bet this, but this guy's a little bit shorter, so let's just call in position. Got short backdoor flush draw. I don't actually mind raising this, but again, because recreationals are so volatile and like C bet heavy, that it just makes the game that little bit easier to play by calling in position. Now that we can't really do anything. Checking table one. This is a very weak size from a recreational. I think if this guy had ace, king, king, queen, aces, like two pairs plus, he would bet bigger. So I'm debating whether to try and bin this turn bet. I am going to bin it, I think. I'm going to see if I can get a fold. And if he calls the raise, we're just going to check back the river. Um, I'm going to be calling with these back doors. Table one, I suppose we could also, this would be a good check raise candidate actually. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and check raise this one. I'm going to size down slightly because this guy's got 
a slightly smaller stack, so I can't go like 15 here, for example. Nice, okay. Again, guys, like, it seems really silly to say, but like, with, with these, like, the people literally have like massive signs on that head that tell, you know, that, that tell you to um, attack them. So just go after them, like, you know. It seems optimal. Um, 10 8 suit isn't really a very good hand to open under the gun, but we've got all these wrecks and we've got a knit on the big blind. I actually have stats on this guy who's folding a lot, so let's just go ahead and open this one. I think we can probably make it work. It's not good enough to call a free bet. I think I'd probably call it like 5 6 suited, 9 10 suited. I think 10 8 gapped is a bit like, yeah. To call free bets, I mean. So we flip a gut shot about to flush draw. We have four ways, which is kind of weird. This is quite a wet board as well. Uh, debating size. I think half pot's quite good. Let's go half. Three folds would be amazing. Or the seven of spades. I'll take the seven of spades. <laughs> the jack of spades is it's good, also good. <laughs> and we also block queen ten, which is really nice. Obviously, I suppose jack nine suit from a recreational and king jack suit would improve. Or just king jack off, depending on the... Um, on the villain, um, you know what? Against two opponents, I'm really happy to check this back and not get raised. So let's do that. If this guy wants to check raise, he might even shove or go huge. So let's realize in position. Um, let's see what we want to do. Sorry, um, folding table two and uh, easy fold table two, uh, table one. So betting here is fine and checking here is completely fine. Like we, this would be, we got 10 high, we block king, um, queen 10. This wouldn't be a terrible hand to just bet the turn with, but I just didn't want to this time. I felt like multi-way against a slightly shorter small blind um, in position, like sometimes we can just check back and realize. It is interesting though, because on that... Um, on that run out, we technically, I mean, we wouldn't have got a fold because we obviously the king would have called, but the nine would have folded. So it's interesting. Sometimes it works both ways. I think heads up, I'd always be better in multi-way. I'd have some more kind of cautious checks. Also, I don't really particularly want to bet massive, get jammed on call and then be up against really, really strong value hands or even better draws. If that guy just got it in with a, with a nut flush draw, for example, you know. I'm just being a knit and trying to, trying to justify it. It's not good. Sometimes being a knit is good. What the fuck is going on table two? Um, cool. None of these are spades. It's very, very disappointing. Ugh. And now we're going to call one big blind into 14 and get raised, aren't we? <laughs> because this is because this is 2-0, I'm just going to call. Because I actually think at least half the time, it actually we, just, we get to see a turn for one big blind. And try and outdraw. But otherwise, it's a bit silly. We're never really good here, multi five ways, and we're just going to induce loads of action behind. So against the recreational table one, I've just got top two pairs. So guess what we're going to do? We're just going to bet massive against the recreational. Probably going to fold table two to a jam rejam. I don't mind going big here. You can actually go big here some of the time in theory also, technically. But it's just because we've got this guy as a recreation. We've got top two pair on a wet board. So what the hell do we want to do? Put loads of money in. So this guy's got queens that flatted, and this guy's got a set of eights. Um, very, very nice. And that guy made a set of queens on the turn. That's quite funny. Get wrecked. We'll play for about another two or three minutes, guys. We'll wrap up at 25. Opening the ace jack suited. That's a good hand. Just taking it down. Come on, man. We get no action. Not even Garrett Adelstein's interested. He's, look how miserable he is. He's doing a 2 and L challenge as well. He's completely fed up and all. I don't know whether I'm supposed to defend this with Jack 5 suit against a 3x in this rake environment. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't think so. That might not even be a defend versus a two and a half. Actually, I might just be completely wailing. Um, we're just going to be c betting. This is a pretty horrendous combo to c bet, by the way. Table two, I appreciate that, but we're just going to be in c bet mode because we're just at two and L, and c betting just just works. Like a lot. Like what will happen is I check here. He'll, you know, 
he'll just lead into the turn with his entire range and then I have to go into cooldown mode and then he bets the river again almost the, like most of the time and I just fold if I don't improve and he wins. Like literally, like you might say, oh, that's oh, wrong hockey. You might go, oh, that's a really bad way of thinking about it. And well, strategically, yes, but exploitatively, it's just fucking true. Like it, it really, really is. Um, like it's just ridiculous. Um, you can't see it, but I actually do have three hundred hands on this guy, and this guy is playing four percent of hands. So you know what? No, I won't entertain it. I won't entertain it. Take my money. Take it. I am not interested. I know you have me absolutely crushed with your entire range, and I'm not interested. So, no. Imagine just having that discipline at micro stakes, just be like, nah, fuck it. The book tells me I have to continue, but I'm telling you, you don't. Fold. And we'll sit out on the next blink blinds for both tables, and then we'll be done. Can open the queen jack. Uh, I, mm, suited connectors fine. Gapped nine sevens a bit trashy for a UTG. As is Jack seven. Look at these four. We just take it down like almost a hundred percent of the time when we see it. It's just absolutely amazing. Like when we're bluffing, it's just so beautiful. Like, when we have it, it sucks. But, Christ, we just take these so many pots down. Ace, four, off suit. We are in a high seabet mentality, and we are in a binning, binning mentality. Mm, this is kind of bad, because there's not really any turn card we're kind of looking for. And the cards that we're looking for, like an ace, improve his hands like King Jack. No, I'm just going to fold. I don't think I bin this lead. I don't bin a queen. I don't bin. There's loads of draws. And I've got the kind of wrong hand where it's like I can improve and it's got bad in reverse implied. So, no, I'm just going to fold. Right, let's have a look at the graph. We are currently up $2.09. It's absolutely amazing. We're the best players in the world. Let's refresh this graph. We are currently up $13.47 with an all-in adjustment of 1586. <laughs> this big blind per 100 says 2542, but guys, this is this is 2600 hands. This is this is nothing. This is nothing. This is dust. So very, very small sample. Um, so yeah, as always, if you like the content, please like, please comment, please subscribe. Leave all your comments in the bottom. Um next video we're gonna be doing, I'm gonna be doing some 25 NL zoom. So look out for that. See you in the next one.